Martha is dead. Why did you say that dad? A game that was heavily censored by PlayStation and a name that apparently Batman really likes. Why did you say that dad? But who is Martha and why is she dead? Well, this game actually tells you the entire story in the most gruesome way possible because this story is absolutely fucked up. It's a psychological horror game with some really intense scenes because of which Sony was like, fuck this shit man, I'm not gonna show it to my audience, no. However, there's one scene very close to the beginning which will tell you why there is a lot of warnings before the game even starts. I will describe the scene in the most normal way possible. You cut someone's face and wear it like a mask. Yep, and that is shown in full detail. The game is basically a tale about two twin sisters and one of them is Martha, who is found dead by you. And you have no idea how she died, while at the same time there is a World War II happening. Even though the trailer showed us a white lady who is apparently haunting the place, it's not exactly the same. You are Julia, who somehow likes really dark stories. And also her grandma is alright telling all these dark stories. Are you guys okay? But ever since you find out that your sister is dead, you go on this journey to find out how she died and at the same time face some of the challenges of the war. You do all of that by running very slowly. Yeah, that's not surprising because apparently in horror games, your feet are too small. But wait, you do have a bicycle that you can use. I cannot believe that a game actually gave me a mode of transport to use. And I gotta say, she drives this bicycle as if she is racing in a MotoGP contest. What is with this camera angle? Who rides like this? After riding this bicycle a little while, I understood that I'm gonna ditch this bicycle, I'm just gonna run instead. One thing that she's really good at is taking photos. She's fond of this camera which is very old school and you can really take any photo you want in the world. But sometimes she goes insane and takes some photos which is very weird. Something is really wrong with you girl. You also go to a specific dark room to take these photos out and there's a mechanic in that which is pretty cool. However, the majority of the game is you walking from one place to the other, either walking inside your house or walking in the forest or someplace underground. So this game can be called a walking simulator but the devs, they are smart. What they did is they added few more gameplay mechanics that you can utilize to not call this a walking simulator. But guess what, it still is a walking simulator. Even though some of these gameplay mechanics is good, but some of them are just annoying. The most frustrating thing that you did was using the telegraph where you need to send a Morse code. Now the reason why it was frustrating is because how slow it was. The game didn't quite make you understand on what you need to do. So I kept on typing words that would make sense but nothing happened. But to be honest, I'm stupid and I guess I could not understand what the game was trying to tell me. So that could be a reason why it was frustrating for me. However, when I look at it at a later point, I think that was a good addition. That was something different that was added in a horror game. But where oh where is the horror part of the game? Well, am I supposed to be get scared? Well, what's happening? The horror starts when it's nighttime. Well, there's not much horror in nighttime either. The only moments that were spooky was when you encountered the white lady, which happened, let me see, uh, this, uh, the second one, three times in almost eight hours of gameplay. The horror of this game is not focused on that lady, even though that is spooky, it's focused on you, which was a shocking factor. The game gives you some shocking scenes because you are having some kind of a mental health problem, as you come to know by somewhat near the end of the game, where you do some really insane things and just unfortunately forget about them. Sometimes you will just run in the forest alone and just choose different words. Sometimes you will see some weird visuals just to probably make some sense out of it. Your mind is not exactly stable and that's why you're just probably making things up. And when you reach the end, the things that she does. Apart from those interesting scenes and the main storytelling, the side quests that you do are not that compelling. Those side quests were mostly the war stuff where you needed to find the underground base enemies or cut the phone lines. There was some compelling stuff at the very beginning of it but it went all away. I kind of lost interest in that. And I was like, give me those gory scenes again, those were interesting than these. And once I get to those gory scenes, I was like, oh god. Oh, I forgot about the biggest scare of this game, lags, yep, that's. The game was laggy as hell for me. One time I was facing straight and trying to turn towards left and the next thing I know, I completely turned 360. I was not even facing the forest at one point in time and I just faced the forest. That was very creepy, you cannot understand what I felt. The game also plays very weirdly at times, very janky. Not the best gameplay out there, a lot could have been improved over there. But on the other hand, the world that you see is quite interesting. World War II is happening, literally around the corner. You see soldiers shooting someone else. You see your family's twisted side. You see the white lady in the forest. It's really fascinating to see how all of that is happening at the literal same time. 
However, since it's a horror game, you might not be impressed much with the horror aspect of the game. Yes, this game is gruesome and it gives you that side of it. But if you're looking for like spooky jump scare like Outlast, you will not get it. The initial stages of the game had some of those good horror, atmosphere, dark. But later on, the spooky side kind of goes away and you're instead shown the intense and gory side of it. The mental illness, the psychological aspects of horror is shown and presented to you. And it's really good storytelling in a way where at the very end, you kind of figure out what's happening with you. In the end, this game is kind of recommendable for those people who can actually handle these gory scenes or these unnatural, too violent scenes. If you can handle those, I think you'll be able to play this game. But there is a big, big warning that I would literally tell you right now before you play the game. The game even tells you a multiple amount of warnings before you start the game. So you definitely read those before you play the game. Overall, Martha is Dead is a good horror game, but a lot of things could have been better like gameplay, some of the camera angles, these side quests could have been a little bit better. Maybe some of them, if they could have cut it all together, would not make much of a difference. So I hope that LKA, the developers of Martha is Dead, can make these changes in the next game. Well, thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and comment down below what you think about Martha is Dead. And check some of these videos out such as Dying Light 2 review and some game news of the week.